Okay, um, hi, this is Greg again. I wanted to talk to you about um, another character in this in this movie that I, for me was very interesting. I thought about um, Thor. Um, Thor was a, a character in... Um, I found him quite funny in uh, Thor Ragnarok, and that kind of made me open up to him more in terms of, like, as a character. Because I remember when I first saw him in the first two movies, um, when I saw him, I, I watched Thor, the first Thor, like, many, 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 many times. And I, I saw how he was very prideful and very arrogant and, and acting like a unconquerable god and causing trouble in the ice room and everything like that. Then when he went from that to where he um, um, he lost the ability to, to power the Muir, the Muir, Muir. I can't pronounce his name. The hammer, okay, who was able to, to to handle the hammer, he couldn't do it. And he tried to pick it up in the presence of um, um, Coulson, Agent Coulson, and he couldn't do it. And then they took him in, and he was all like humbled and stuff when he wasn't worthy. And I saw that when he was able to um, you know, go from there when he became worthy, you know how it's like it, it changed him and he transformed. Was able to like start serving and start getting humble. He went to the Dark Elves. I don't remember the Dark Elves movie so much. I I, I saw it once. And I and I didn't pay much attention to it. I just kind of like I I should go back and watch it again because it is a big part of an end game that you know that kind of he comes back that I really you know I was at a miss I really didn't remember it. Then um so when you get to like um um him in uh, Avengers, I thought it was interesting how he was in Avengers. He was very um uh, he was fun. He and the Hulk were, were kind of fighting back and forth. Then when you got to see I saw him again in um you know uh, Ragnarok. It was like amazing because Ragnarok was like one of those things where, um, well, uh, right, no, it was Ragnarok. No, before Ragnarok, it was um, is a uh, Ultron. He was an Ultron, and he didn't have much of a role in Ultron, but he was able to bring um, um, Vision to life. So he brought Vision to life, and then again, his character was much. But when Ragnarok, he was so funny. He was so hilarious, and I thought it was really fun as a just to be able to hear and to you know see him talk and then try to interact and he, and then you know go through go through a bit of you know. Of sadness, so when he finally got to Infinity War, at how he was really broken down, and he was my favorite character in Infinity War, that he had, um, he was on the verge of destruction, and he lost everything, and then just for him to, like, come back in the very end with Stormbreaker, and he was, and he missed him, he missed, um, Thor's, uh, Thor, um, uh, Thanos' uh, head, and he got his arm instead, and so because of that, he was one of those things where, you know, in this movie, he took it to heart, and it caused him to, to sink into some major depression, because at that point, you know, before that, he had his father, he had his brother, his brother was an ice, uh, um, ice giant, you know, um, and he was a god of mischief, and then his father was, his father died, his sister, his sister um, um, broke his hammer, his sister poked out his eye, you know, his mother died by elves, you know, his whole planet got destroyed, um, in terms of, like, you know, the whole thing about Ragnarok, being Ragnarok, the destruction of Asgard, and, um, and so pretty much he had he and he was he was made king over the last of his people and then here's Thor's Thanos is coming to just destroy and half the ship and pretty much he kills Loki in his presence you know so it's like all these things happen he's like had nothing left and he goes to, to fight the monster the monster Thanos and um, Thanos totally destroys him you know um, destroys everybody with a snap of the finger in um, in End Infinity War and so what happens is like there's no um, there's no opportunity for him to actually you know, find peace and find solace, you know? So he's all, like, depressed. He goes into depression. And I understand that. So they have a part where you show his stomach and he's all, like, you know, fat and everything like that. And I, I laughed a little bit when I saw that because I thought it was funny. But then it's like, you know, overall, you start thinking, like, you know what? It's, this poor guy, this poor guy's going through so much, you know? It's like he's, he's really, you really feel sorry for him, you know? And it's just like, then so they, he meets Captain Marvel and they have a little bit of show of force kind of thing. I mean, they don't fight or nothing, but it's just kind of a, you know, he likes this one kind of thing, he says, but... You know, and then later, you know, he gives him. He gets back in the game and he fights as best he can against Thanos. And you know, later he joins Guardians of the Galaxy. And, you know, and but the thing is, like when he's fighting with um, before that he gives over his kingdom to uh, Valkyrie. And I was just like, well, you know, I mean, maybe he was meant to be king. You know, he's supposed to be king, and and maybe he's meant to, you know. But then maybe he you kind of realized that you know humbling aspect that maybe he's not fit to be king. You know. But then I thought about, like, you know, in terms of power, all too often the people who um, who people think they should be in power are not the ones who should be in power. So the, as an aspect of it, like, you have a thing where, you know, Thor um, Thor has it where he wanted to be, like, you know, like Simba and Lion King, he wants to be king, he just can't wait to be king. Then his father dies and realizes, oh, good night, I don't want to be king. Then out of necessity he becomes king, and he's a good king. 
you know, and I'm not sure what happens after that for Simba, but in the case of like, um, uh, you know, uh, um, in Black Panther, you know, he's going to be king one day, he didn't want his dad to die, his dad dies, and now he's forced to be king, and then he's just like, he has to fight for right to prove himself in the Black Panther movies, but like in Thor's case, Thor didn't, Thor wanted to be, then he was willing to relinquish it, you know, and, you know, and then after that, he was willing to, um, you know, after that, he, he went out to go find Infinity Stones, and then after that, you know, he was willing to help the Avengers and trying to stop Loki again, you know, and things like that, you know, all these different things he was willing to do. But for the most part, though, it was like one of those things where, um, I, I don't know about his character. I feel like his character lost its power. It's like, I sometimes I wonder, like, you know, the agenda that they have in this world is just to make men, like, totally, like, powerless. So it seemed like he just lost his power, and he lost, like, you know... He just lost a lot of stuff in this movie, uh, in all the movies. So it's like, a person like Tony, who went from losing, this movie was about, like, all of this, what makes my favorite, my favorite um, 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 comic book hero is Spider-Man, because Spider-Man is about, you know, he goes through loss and, and struggle and, and, and affliction. And so when you see other characters kind of going through the same kind of thing, you know, it's like, you know, they're all different highs and lows and things like that, and they all kind of ebb, and they all come to the same point in these um, Avenger movies and all these, um, you know, these, these tie-in movies. I find it very interesting because I think it's, like, one of the beautiful things about, like, how, you know, they can write a good script and put things together. But a lot of it has to do with, like, you know, they're, they have to try and find out who they are. And so Thor spends a lot of time trying to figure out who he, who he is. And so when he becomes king of Asgard, you would think that that's kind of like he reached his pinnacle and said, therefore, I know who I am. And now I'm like Odin. I'm not going to question who I am anymore. I'm not going to live in thing. I'm not going to be shook I'm going to be focused and I know what I am, regardless of my situation at this point. Because you know what? You see, like, you know, um, like, 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 um, the Bible talks about how, you know, there's a point where, where God, God repented that he made man. The Bible said God was sorry that he made man, you know, because, like, he, you know, that, that man has great potential for good, but also man has done a lot of evil. And there's a part where God actually flooded the earth because the wickedness of man, the wickedness of man was great, was wickedness in the land, not only just man, but in the land itself. So, we believe that, you know, biblically speaking, there was a thing that happened where, you know, angels were trying to intermarry with humans and try and change the whole um, human gene pool and genome as well as all the animals and trees and things like that. So you have, like, things like a little bit of a cancer type thing coming into the human race that wasn't there before to change our genetic code. And so what happened, God had to flood the whole world and just and the animals as well, too, so that they can preserve the you know, two by two and, uh, you know, animal and the, 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 the non messed up human, um, DNA to continue the human race. Otherwise it'd be like, no one could get saved because all of us would be half angel, half human kind of thing. And there's no salvation for angels. Anyway, so that's a little piece right there. You just got to think about that for a while. But for the most part though, in the case of, um, uh, Thor, he should have had a, a strong God mind, a strong, you know, demigod mind that would not be shaken by external situations. You know, I mean, I don't, he's apparently a God who can't see the future. And, like, you know, many false gods can't see the future anyway, but, like, in, in, in especially this is, like, a cartoon type thing, and I'm using a lot of energy to explain a lot of stuff, but for the most part, though, his, 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 um, his, it's hard to determine where his arc was, because in the first movie, he had his arc where he realized that he needs to be humble to be a good king, and then after that, in the second movie, I'm not 100% sure, but he was willing to work with his brother, and brother, and hit his father, and all that, so he went through different movies, and he learned about working together as a team, and working together in, in the consequences, and things like that, and finally, finally, when he comes to Ragnarok, he learns about loss, and gain, and he becomes a king, and that's where it should stop for his arc, when they put him in this movie, and, and he went, and he missed, you know, and it, and it broke him down again, but he was willing to fight and die for his people, and then he went, and he went to kill Thanos, and then it didn't change anything, and he couldn't save the people, and he blamed himself, and then so it just showed him a man deteriorated, but it couldn't happen that way, you know, he'd have to continue on, he says, you know what, I have a people, I still have a people, I still gotta continue on, and that's one of the things I thought about, you know, in this movie, that he should have, um, you know, he should have maintained, and he should have still been the king of Asgard, he shouldn't have just handed it over, because she, Valkyrie, had given up too, and she was actually in the service of Bounty Hunter and all that stuff, just like, um, she had given up, you know, she was serving um, Sakaar and, um, and Jeff Goldblum's character, right, you know, and so, anyway, long story short, um, she had given up, and she was able to be revived, but the bottom line is that you have, um, the bottom line is that, you know, when you have your mind focused on something, things outside shouldn't change you, and that's what I'm saying about this in terms of Thor, so I was really sad that he got changed so badly, all right, thanks for listening, all right, bye.